Hello, my name is Brother McGill, and I'm back with another lesson of Words with Comfort. And before we begin, I'd like to say, I hope everyone is doing okay out there, stay safe, wear their masks, and stay in social distancing. It's so good to be, uh, to be back, and I thank God for that. So before we jump in, I would like to open up with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, Savior Jesus Christ, once again, dear Lord, we come to you on this beautiful day, this Sunday. Thank you for all the things that you do for us, for all the many blessings that you restored upon us. And we thank you, dear Lord, in uh, good times and in bad times, dear Lord. We know, dear Lord, that you are God Almighty, and we know, Father God, with you, all things are possible. And we follow you, Father God, do what you have us to do, dear Lord. We know, dear Lord, that we will make it to eternal life and have eternal life, dear Lord, and a crown of immortality as well. I also pray, for, dear Lord, for those who are going through a terrible time with the coronavirus right now. With so many loss of lives, over two or some thousand people have died so far, and still counting. And I pray for the, their families and I know they go through a terrible time because I know how I feel to lose a loved one. So I pray for them, dear Lord, that you have them in a bad time, bless them in a good time. And for those out here going through a terrible time financially, dear Lord, who are really struggling, Father God, to pay their bills, who are out here trying to uh, hide the groceries. The groceries are so high out here now, Father God, if it's food prices, it's outrageous. We just, I pray for them that you have them in a bad time, bless them in a good time as well. We live in an evil and simple world, Father God, and I just pray, Father God, and I pray, dear Lord, that the true believers, those who really believe in you and trust in you, stay strong and never give up, because that's what Satan wants us to do. He wants us so in, a, uh, in hell with him for eternity, because misery loves company. So just help us, Father God, to stay strong and never give up, even though things might look so bad, Father God, but your Bible, your word teaches us that things must happen have to happen. So help us to understand that. Help us to stay strong and never give up, Father God. Help us keep the breastplate of faith on when we fight Satan his wild each and every day, dear Lord. All the evil, the deception out here, all the lying and the backbiting, all the hatred out here, Father God. Help us, dear Lord, to stay away from that, dear Lord, and to stay strong, dear Lord, and don't come around that, Father God. And just, just, there's so many things that are going on right now, dear Lord, that, you know, it's so terrible. So this happens, Father God, and that's why through your word, we can have comfort. It happens, dear Lord, to keep on want to stay fast in your word, keep on want to live by your word, and do the things that you have us to do that are pleasing and separate in your sight. And all these things, I pray, your divine, holy, almighty, wonderful name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. I like to talk about in Old Testament. I like to talk about in Old Testament, the book of Proverbs, chapter 6, 16 and 19. That's the book of Proverbs in the Old Testament, 6, 16 through 19. And before we begin, I'd like to say it's a lot of evil out here once again. So you got to stay strong. Don't never give up on your eternal soul, though that Satan had a victory of eternal life over your soul. That's what he wants. He wants your soul so bad. And he'll do all he can. He'll come through anyone, television, your friends, your mate, whatever he, he can, he will come through to try to get your soul. So you got to stay strong and never give up. Once again, that's Proverbs 6. 16 through 19. And it reads, listen very closely. Verse 16 tells us, These six things do the Lord hate. Yea, seven are a abomination unto him. A proud look is a abomination unto him. A lying tongue. Is a abomination to him. A hands that shed innocent blood is a abomination to him. 
uh, verse 18, at heart that devises wicked imagination. It's an abomination to him. Feet that swift and run into mischief. It's an abomination to him. Verse 19, a false witness that speaketh lies. It's an abomination to him. And he that soweth discord among brethren is an abomination to him. God don't hate that person. God is hate these things. Because they are an abomination to him. So just ask yourself a common sense question. As you see what's going on in this world right now to this day, all the evil, all the lying, deception, all the cunning people out here, the proud people out here, the bolsters out here. All you got to do is watch the news. And all these things are abomination to him. So just ask yourself a question. If I'm doing any of these things, and God hate these things, where do you think I'm going to end up for eternity? Be not deceived by Satan and his wiles or his evil spirits. So this is what's going to happen. So a lot of people out here don't do not know God. And the Bible teaches us this. Second Thessalonians, uh, New Testament. Second Thessalonians, uh, chapter one, seven through nine. That God will take Jesus going to take vision of those who do not know God. Come judgment day, a lot of people do not know God. I said, what they going, they gonna think it's okay to be an evil person, a liar, a backbiter, a hater, selfish, childish, uh, 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 treacherous, you know, like brutal, you know, immoral, you know, like mischievous. They think it's okay to be these things. Because kind of why they do not know God. And they oh, it's it's okay to be these things. You know, like, it's, it's okay to ha uh, hate your brother. It's okay to. A lie to one another. It's okay to do these things because why? They do not know God. And once again, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 7 through 9 clearly tells us Jesus is going to take vision of those who do not know God. And that's why people out here are going to be doing these things right now. I'm not saying this, the Bible says this. People about just like I said, keep this look at the news. You see all this stuff going on. And why people do not know God. So the people who are following that, like, like, like I said, angel, Satan had angels following him. They ended up in hell for eternity. Ride on with him. Keep following this world. And Satan is in this world. We're about to see this. I see that in, in Ephesians. He's in this world. And keep following this world and see what happens. We end up in hell for eternity too. Because a lot of people do not understand or want to hear the truth. They don't want to hear the truth. Let's move on. Look at Proverbs. Uh, yeah, Proverbs chapter 8 and verse 13. Let's turn on with me to Proverbs chapter 8 and verse 13. <coughs> That is Proverbs chapter 8, verse 13. And it reads, The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, arrogancy, and, and the evil way, and the fore mouth do I hate. God, I hate these things. He hates these things. He don't hate that person, but he hates these things. So if God hates these things, just think, if God hates these things, should I be doing these things? Should I be walking around here a liar, a backbiter, a hater? Should I be going out here and doing even a proud look? I'm bolstering about myself. I'm constantly doing evil, mischief. Deceitful. I'm lying. I'm underhanded. Should I be doing these things out here? Trying to be cunning. Trying to get over on people. 
Shall we be doing any of these things? No, because God hate these things. And if God hate these things, why do you think I'm going to end up come judgment day? Amen. This is words, words of comfort, words, words of comfort. Right? I got my ass up there, but words of comfort. And this is words of comfort to help you to understand that it's not all right to do these things. Like some people might sell this internet, it's okay to do certain things. Or some people only or in this world tell you it's okay to do certain things. No, it's not. And God hates it. Don't be deceived. Because this is your eternal soul. And not no one else. This is your eternal soul. And if you don't care about it, trust me, no one else gonna care about it. Now that jump over to me with uh, Ephesians chapter 6, 10 through 17. That Ephesians chapter 6, 10 through 17. Does anyone have any questions? Mm -hmm. That Ephesians chapter 6, 10 through 17. In the New Testament. Once again, that is Ephesians chapter 6, 10 through 17. And this is the reason why people are doing all these evil things. This is the reason right here. And it reads at verse 10. Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not, listen very closely, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Before I continue, let me explain something to you. Evil trickles down. Evil trickles down to the ones out here who's in power. And trickles down and it tries to corrupt those out here. That's how evil, evil does. And evil's in this world. And it trickles all the way down. Catch those in power. And keep on trickling, keep trickling down, trickling down, trickling down, trickling down. And try to corrupt those who are not in power. That's how evil works. You read it right here. We, we, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against spiritual wickedness in high places, against the ruler of this world, the darkness of this world. That's what we wrestle against. We fight against each and every day. Evil, selfishness. We fight against all these things that are out here. The backbite, the busybodies. We, we fight against these things. The liars, the haters, the, the, I mean, the selfishness people out here. Those out here who say they really believe in God, but don't know nothing about God's word. Those, as soon as you turn your back, they talk about you like a dog. And then when you're in front of their face, they talk about the other person like a dog. Their name is always. Somebody name always on their tongue. Try to put them down. These are the ones who say they are your friends. These are the ones that say they got evil spirits out here corrupting people to try to get your soul. You got to be careful. Remember, God hates these things. You, can, you can't be going out here and doing these things. You got to stay strong no matter what. Don't let no one empower, no one out here deceive you. Because they will. Hey, listen. I be on the internet, and I read a lot of stuff on the internet. I do. And I see a lot of deception going on, and a lot of lying going on on the internet about the Word of God. Stuff they say do not match, clearly not match with the Bible. Clearly don't match with it. They said anything. Don't fall for it. If you stay with the Word of God, you cannot go wrong. You stay with the word of God. Cannot go wrong. 
It's like if you drive your car somewhere and somebody give you directions to go to find a place where you can find that place and they give you directions. You gotta follow their directions. Because if you don't, you're gonna do what? Go wrong. Or also people with that GPS system, right? On their phone. If you don't follow that direction, you'll go wrong. Don't be deceived. Let me keep on reading. Uh, does it know where we was at? 13. 13. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having a learned skirt and bought with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shown with the preparation of the gospel of peace. So, what's peace? The gospel is the peace. Verse 16, above all, taking a shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery doors of the wicked. And verse 17, and take the heaven of salvation and the soul of the spirit, which is the word of God. Verse 16, once again, above all, taking the shield of faith, think about hearing the word of God. Romans 10, 17. Think about hearing the word of God. So how can I take the shield of faith on? Only by his word. Because all the evil coming my way, I can fight Satan out with the word of God. I could quench all the fiery doors of the wicked with the word of God. And that's why I say, uh, uh, verse 16 again, above all, taking the shield of faith, when with you shall be able to quench all the fiery doors of the wicked. <clears throat> And take the hammer of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. That's how you fight out evil, by the word of God. When the evil comes your way, you can fight it out. Don't get me wrong, we only hear it. We make mistakes, yes. But you keep on getting up and you fight and you fight and you never give up. You never get up. You keep on getting up out the ground. I say you might got you might want to uh, the, the better, but you never win a war over my soul. You get up and you keep fighting and fighting and fighting and fighting. Don't never get in, give in to Satan. And once you do, he got you for eternity. So you gotta stay strong and never give up. This is real talk, sound teaching of the word of God strictly from the Bible. Who I want to listen to? Man, version of the word of God, or actually the word of God itself. God, this is what save us. This is what keep us strong. This is what help us to fight in an evil day. Trust me. And trust and believe. Because I already thought in my life, oh, I'm a good person. I'm going to heaven. Oh, I thought, oh, I know I got a, a good heart. I'm going to heaven. No, I'm going to go to church on Sundays. I'm going to heaven. But no, because that's what I was led to believe. But though the Bible tells us only the save, it's going to heaven. Only the save. Not those who got a good heart. Those who get to go to church. <clears throat> but only the save that goes to heaven. I love my brothers and sisters, whether I know you or not. And that's why I teach you the truth of God's word. Because my soul, I want eternal life. That's my main goal in life to have eternal life. And then, I follow behind God. Then I know how to treat others. I know how to treat others now. I know how to carry myself now because I follow behind God now. At first, I didn't follow behind God, so I need to understand a lot of things. But now I follow behind God and his word, and that made me a better person. And now I'm still growing and growing and growing and growing. And I boast in God and not myself. I boast in God and not myself because it's not about me because I didn't do nothing. I ain't changed nothing, nothing. God, through his word, changed me. And I give him all the glory. Let's move on. Look at Luke. You see, a lot of people right here don't believe that God knows this. Look at Luke chapter 16. 13 to 15. <clears throat> that is the Gospel of Luke, chapter 16. And 
13 through 15. That's the Gospel of Luke 16, 13 through 15. And it reads, No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Verse 14, And the Pharisees also who was covetous, that means greedy, heard all these things, and they was uh, and they derailed him. I'm saying that right. Derailed him, thank you. Verse 15, And he said unto them, Ye or they would justify yourself before man. It's very closely. But God nor your hearts. For that which is highly esteemed among men is a abomination in the sight of God. <laughs> it's a abomination. See, see, people think God know their heart. They think I can lie to this person, oh, but, but nothing's gonna happen. He don't know. Well, they don't know, but God knows your heart. That's the only one you should be making sure. And you honest with God, and you can be honest with everybody else. And you honest with God. Because God is the ultimate punisher, the ultimate father, the ultimate judge. So you'll make sure you're doing everything right in his sight. So then, when you run others, trust me, you know how to carry yourself. Because a lot of people I think God don't know how to, God do not know their heart. God don't know my heart. God don't know my good. God don't know my heart. And think that. And the reason why it says that, because Jesus Christ said it. That's enough right there to there. But to help you to explain more, the reason why I said it, because all you got to do, look at the news. Look at the news. Look at, uh, look at the internet. Talk with some people out here. Like, whoa. They think God don't know them. They think God don't know their hearts. See, your biggest thing is this, and mine as well. We got to make sure we do everything that pleases God. We got to make sure we ain't doing nothing that's a barber nation to him. Because see, people out here who follow wicked people. They follow, they follow liars. They follow haters. They follow separate people. They follow people like that. And you just sit back and use common sense. Evidently, you must be the exact same way that person is. Because the things that person might be doing out here, it might be okay in your sight, but in God's sight, it's a barber nation. If you know that person's a liar, you know that person's a hater, you know that person's mischievous, and you know that person is no good, underhanded, sneaky, and you know these things, deceiver, Lie to a person at a drop of the hat, and you know these things. Ain't no way the world should be followed behind something like that. Okay, if you are, you don't care about your soul. I don't care what that person can do for me <clears throat> to make me rich. I don't care. My soul means more than anything. I, Jesus Christ said one of the gospels. I mean, all, all, all uh, God, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, except John, what, what uh, good is to inherit, uh, inherit the world and lose your eternal soul? What good is that? So, a lot of people out here who fall behind evil, and they don't really care. Only care about what that person can do for them. Fame, fortune, money, that's all they care about. You can't take it with you. And remember, the love of money is the root of all evil. Okay, and they close it. Look at First John one one. First John one one. That's First John chapter one and verse one. That's first John chapter uh, one verse one. The Bible reads this that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our own eyes, 
which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled the word of life. Colossians 3.16 tells us that the word of Christ dwell in you richly. If I had the word of Christ dwelling in me, I should have life. This is the word of life right here. Ain't nothing else. It's the word of life but right here. This is the word of life. Don't let no one deceive you and say, man, you can have life this way, that way, this way, this way, this way. Only, you can, only way you can have life is by the word of God. That's the only way. Don't let no man tell you nothing different that you can have life. Because 1 Thessalonians 2.13 said the word of God works with those that believe. That is 1 Thessalonians 2.13. Jesus also tells us over here in Matthew. He said the evil, Matthew chapter 15, 1 through 20. That Matthew, Matthew, Matthew 15, excuse me, 1 through 20. The evil that comes out of a person's mouth, that defiles a person. The evil, the thoughts that he has, that defiles a person. Keep the word of, put the, let the word of Christ dwell in you like the Bible said, Colossians 3, 16. And this is, and this is called the word of life. When I had a word dwell in me, I should have life. And who they was talking about? They were talking about Jesus Christ. The hands that held on the word of life. He gave us life through his word. Don't let no man tell you nothing different. If you don't know the Bible yourself, find out the truth for yourself. Don't believe me, but find out here, imploring you and pleading with you, find out the truth for yourself. And I'm warning you also, find the truth out for yourself. How man will deceive you. This is your eternal soul. You should say to yourself, and you still live it. People out here who live it, you saw, we all have seen people have died. Kyle's sister tell you, I'm going to die one day too. You got to make sure you prepare. <laughs> you got to make sure you prepare. When God calls you home or when he come back, you got to make sure you prepare. And that's how you prepare right here, by his word. Because the Bible tells us over at John, we're going to be judged by the word of God. We're going to be judged by every word, by the word of God. Gospel John tells us that. So Kyle's just to tell you, I should know the word of God. I'm going to be judged by it. You go take a test at school. You go and take a test at school. You go make sure you know that you know the answers before you take that test. Know the word of God. And you'll be judged by it. Any questions? Before I uh, go in prayer, close the prayer, I'd like to say thank y'all for those who's watching. I pray for those out there who, go, who, are, who are struggling out here. Don't let Satan overcome you with evil. Overcome evil with good. Never give up on your eternal soul. Never give up. Never give up. These are words with comfort. The love of my heart, my brothers and sisters, whether I know you or not, stay strong and never give up. If you know God, you can see where all this stuff is going on right now. The hurricane, the wildfires, the, 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 the fire that hit globally, hit the whole world. The, the evil that comes out of people's mouth. If you just watch the news, you can see that God's on his way back. And you better make sure you repair. God, trust me. I fight each and every day to stay close to God by his word. To make sure I prepare. I know one day I'm going to die, he's going to call me home. And I don't want to turn to hell for eternity. I don't want that. Because the Bible teaches that Jesus Christ tells us that he's going to tell them, prepare for Satan and his angels. He said, now many that, many that come to me says, Lord, Lord, we're entering the kingdom of heaven. But those who do the will of my Father, that's to believe on the Son, John 6, 40. Those who uh, the word of God worship those that believe. He also tell them, prepare for Satan and his angels. For eternity. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that at all. And that's why I stay in God's word and I grow in God's word. 
No, I, I once again, I boast of God, not myself. And I pray to God that you stay God worthy, stay fast, and never give up. And watch who you hang around with and you socialize with as well. Because Satan know how to come through others to get you your soul. Trust me. Trust me. I know. Let's go ahead and pray. Once again, Heavenly Father, we come to you thanking you for everything, for all the things that you do for us, for all the glory to go through your word that you share to us, Father God, because you don't, because you didn't have to do that. You could have said, you know what? They won't be sinless. They can follow, they can be with Satan for eternity. No, you give us a chance. You gave us your son. We cannot die for all of sins. And we too can have the tree of life and we choose us. And that's why you're, and he came down and he's the word. The word was made flesh. He's the word. Can I it gave us the word? What we need to do, and the word is right there in our face. So I pray for Father God that those out here who are really struggling, Father God, from through evil, those the Lord might have slept, that lost their faith, Father God, got faith in right here in the word of God. Please, Father God, I pray you bring them back to it, dear Lord. Have them stay strong and never give up. Mm -hmm. I pray that the light shine and true worship. If it's not me, but other true worshipers out here, uh, dear Lord, the people see the work of faith with power in us, which will glorify you, Father, in heaven. And Father, may they will come to the light of the glorious gospel before it ever lasts and too late. Mm -hmm. So I pray that for Father God, help us to stay strong, dear Lord. We live in, we only hear we live in a sinful, evil world, dear Lord, that so many lies are being told, so many people are power, so many. Uh, the, those that are so of so much deception going on, dear Lord, it's terrible. So we need you, Father God. So help us all in the terrible times that we live in right now. Mm -hmm. Help us, dear Lord, to stay strong. Help us understand, dear Lord, that we can't give up on you. We got to stay with you no matter what. Through the good times and the bad times, we got to stay strong with you. Mm -hmm. So let's come to you where we need you. Where we got to be 24-7. We got to make sure we stay with you. Every second, every moment, every minute, every hour, every day of our lives. We got to make sure we stay with you and never give up our eternal soul. So we thank you for everything. We pray to keep watching over us all, protect us all, keep us safe in the only way that you can. If it wasn't for you, dear Lord, we'll know where we'll be at right now to this day. So we thank you for everything. We just pray all the prayers to you because you, we know you're the Apple and the Omega, the Lord, Lord, King and Kings. And that's why we come to you in prayer. Thank you for everything. Amen. Amen. Y'all take care out there, and God bless.